to the webinar metrics that uh, uh, matter. We're going to be looking at uh, the best metrics to use in your contact center. And uh, delighted to introduce to you um, uh, two well-respected uh, professionals within the business. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, Richard Farrell from Netcall. Richard was with us in a webinar in January that was very well received. Richard's going to be looking initially at uh, why measure and uh, what to measure. And will also be coming back to us with what user research shows. And uh, delighted also to be joined by Richard Snow from the, uh, I call it analyst company, Ventana, uh, who does a lot of research on a lot of um, uh, contact center and technology related uh, areas and going to be presenting contact center metrics that matter, including I think some research that uh, certainly I'd never seen before, which I think uh, saw in the dress rehearsal. This is sort of... Um, is this the first public airing of this? Yeah, research? there's certainly one slide which is going to be its first public airing. So. Ah, so you saw it. You saw it first on uh, on our webinar. Uh, we'll be then be doing top tips from the audience, and then uh, we'll be taking interactive questions and answers. Uh, you can also log those into the chat room at any time. In one word, please, could you put in what is your most important call center metric? Uh, obviously. If it's, I'll accept three words here if you want to do uh, average handling time or two words if it's net promoter score. So in, uh, one, in one phrase, let's say, uh, what is your most important contact center metric? Danny has said it's average time to answer. Leslie has said talk utilization. Phil has said SLA. Robin has said abandon percentage. Uh, we've got Bojan has said ATA and HT. Kathleen speed to answer. Uh, Doogie One, Net Promoter Score, Ryan Holds Time, Abdul Cool Waiting Time, uh, Jacob Resolution Time, uh, Dion has said First Call Resolution, we've got Average Handling Time from Karen, Greg, Active Time, Abandoned Percentage, AHD, Hold Time, lots of times coming into this list, isn't it, Richard Snow? Lots of times, lots of uh, AHTs, which... Uh it will not surprise you when you see my slide later on that uh, you're following uh, quite a number of other companies. So uh, let's have a, have a few. There's a uh, call answer percentage, uh, says Richard. Uh, Marcin has said service level, Matt customer satisfaction scores, Carla NPS, Vladimir first contact resolution, definitely. So quite a range of different uh, uh, different measurements there, but uh, yeah, I think it's quite interesting. A lot of them are very time based, and uh, I think you know, I, I won't spoil uh, what's coming up in the uh, in in the webinar. But I think we're going to be having some quite interesting uh, quite interesting looks at that. Um, now, delighted to introduce to you uh, Richard Farrell uh, from Netcall, and uh, Richard, um, if you'd like to. Uh, take us through why measure, if you'd perhaps like to start with just a, a brief introduction would be uh, for those who weren't on our, our, our last webinar in January. Thank you very much, John T. Um, I'm Richard Farrell. I'm CTO at Netcall. I've been with Netcall for more than 12 years. Um, I know what we do inside out. Um, it's very interesting when we move outside of the product view and look at a wider picture and some of the research that Richard has done um, and some of the work that we've done with our user events is um, really informing how we move forward. So that's very interesting and opportune activity. Okay, so the, the first thing to, um, to really identify is what are performance indicators? And effective reporting is about reporting better, more integrated information that communicates the true position. And we've mentioned, and Jonty's read through some of the numbers and the metrics that are used within organizations. In terms of what we should measure, we need to understand what's important, and that's within each area. And choosing the right KPIs relies upon a good understanding of what's important to the organization. And what is important often depends on the department that's measuring the performance. So KPIs used in finance will probably be quite different from KPIs in sales. So the first thing to do is understand what's important within each area. The other thing about um, what and why we should measure is that this is a method to communicate performance. And rather like different business areas, there are also different stakeholders who require 
different sorts of information. So customers as stakeholders will require different information from management, who again will require different information from the team. So really I suppose in summary there we're saying one measure doesn't necessarily fit all. There may be different measures for different stakeholders. And it's very important to align tactical activity with organizational strategy. And in context, this means not just a one-off measurement, but where are we, where are we going to, and why are we going there? So where to from here and why? And when we do that, we can reinforce positive movement. So last year, our score in this key performance indicator was eight. This year, it's nine. We're moving in the right direction. So reinforce positive movement. The changes that we've made have had a good impact. OK, we're now going to uh, go to a poll. And uh, the poll question we're going to ask is, which KPIs do you use in your contact centre? So if you'd like to select all that apply, KPI key performance indicator, uh, the things that you can uh, vote on are average handling time, service level, for instance, the percentage of calls uh, answered within 20 seconds, or percentage of calls that meet 80% within 20 seconds, for example, percentage abandoned, wrap-up time, or utilization. So if you'd just like to um, uh, put all of those in. Richard Snell, I'm going to put you on the spot here and ask you to see if you could predict a, a winner from what our audience are voting on. Well, I think from my own experience, my previous uh, research and the answers that you got earlier, if average handling time is not number one, I should be very surprised. Ah, well... Prepare to be very surprised. <laughs> Let's have a look at uh, what the audience of uh, audience said. And to be fair, very very close on this. We have the highest is actually service level, is the uh, uh, is the is the consensus of the of the highest in our audience. Uh, Seventy uh, followed closely by seventy four percent with average handling time, seventy three percent measuring percentage abandoned. 48% uh, are you measuring utilization, and 42% are measuring wrap-up time. So there's quite a quite a division. Wrap-up time's surprising, not as not as uh, as much as as I would expect it on there, Richard Farrell. Does that surprise you? Um, I, I, we find it varies considerably in vertical sector. Um, so I, I would. I would normally want to see in which verticals that's um, a higher or, or lesser value, um, because we do find it varies very considerably. Okay, so back to you, Richard Farrell. Okay, well, of course, those interest, those um, answers are very interesting, and um, one thing that we've recently been exposed to um, at some NetCore user events is um, some presentations by the Professional Planning Forum, and if you're interested in, in contact centre metrics, I would strongly recommend having a look at the Professional Planning Forum. They do a lot of really, really interesting academic research, even to degree level now in mm -hmm. this subject. Indeed. So these are our masters of measurement. Um, and of course, what's really interesting about KPIs and the KPI level is where it fits within um, the organization. And one thing that the PPF have come up with is the KPI pyramid, which I think encapsulates very nicely where KPIs fit, but also whether, where other indicators fit within the organization. So if we start at the top of the pyramid is the organizational strategy and this is where we might have an organizational objective like a market positioning. This then flows through into an organizational strategy at the board level and when we get to the KPI level we're looking at measurable objectives. Now it's interesting and we could have a good debate but certainly what we seem to get from those um, answers and lots of other research is that rather than measurable objectives at the KPI level Certainly in the contact sensor, we tend to have a lot of performance indicators or even operational indicators which are used as proxies or instead of KPI level measurable objectives. So this is very interesting um, and there are a couple of takeaways from this. The first one is that if the operational and performance indicators don't fit in the pyramid, you really should question why you're measuring them, why are they there, what are they there for. And the second takeaway, I'd say, is to make sure that um, it's very easy to align right from departmental and operational and agent objectives. It should be possible to translate and move up the pyramid to see how that relates right throughout the organization. We can give you an example of how we can go through with some measurable objectives. 
So if we start at the top of that pyramid, an organizational objective might be to increase customer advocacy. The organizational strategy would be to ensure ease of transactions, um, and that's something that's getting um, a lot of traction at the moment. Customer effort is something that's um, really interesting, and I think we'll see more of moving forward. Um, at the next level, we are then to the measurable objectives. So at this KPI level, it might be repeat sales revenue. And as I mentioned earlier, this should be a journey. So it's from a value last year to a value this year. So that's the measurable objective. At the performance indicator level, this is where we might get to things like improved customer satisfaction scores, again on a journey. And then at the operational indicator level, we might be at reduced complaints, and again, last year versus this year. So what we saw in, in a lot of the, what people were saying are the mo most important measurements were down at the operational indicator level rather than that at uh, sort of, you know, the KPI level. Yes, I, I would agree with that. Quite often we find that because of the number of stakeholders, call centers end up with lots of other people's KPIs imposed upon them. Mm -hmm. which, yeah. um, and I think we also have a legacy of, um, from the early days of contact centers when we had lots of things that we could measure. So for the first time, we could measure average handling time of a transaction. We could measure a service level, which we could never do when it was face-to-face -face or, mm. or other methods. So um, all of a sudden, we had this lovely data, and we started to measure it and use it, and all of a sudden, it sort of became performance indicators, when perhaps it's operational indicators that lead to key performance indicators. Mm. And drilling down into the customer advocacy metrics, there are a number of stages that you can follow. If you were on the webinar just before the start, um, John T was telling us that he's been contacting some mobile phone providers recently. And um, in terms of John T's evaluation of the customer journey, there are a few, a few um, failure points that um, we could update the process in. Yeah, I certainly think, I mean, hats off to Orange, uh, who came top of it. They said on their IVR message, we're committed to customer service and did actually answer the call with the minimum of IVR transactions straight away, but a lot of the others were, um, I'm not going to mention names, were, were, were just got caught completely lost in a maze and, and passed from pillar to post, uh, even after you got through to the uh, right people. And it is surprising um, with the evolution of call centre um, services and different delivery um, options that um, fundamentally there needs to be um, a, a sort of a drains up, a, a uh, put yourself in the customer's shoes and walk their walk. Mm. Um, so individually, it might be a good idea to add another message or it might be a good idea to give another option. But if you go through that whole customer journey, you may find that's not such a great idea. Um, when we get down into objective two here, which is to repeat sales revenue, that's when we might be into some other performance indicators, improved sales technique, product line, service delivery. To improve customer satisfaction, well, we've just mentioned an improved user interface, um, but also reduce input errors and improve data collection accuracy. Um, so that will improve customer satisfaction. And of course, there are ways you can do that with technology um, to make it easier for all concerned. And then an objective number four here could be to reduce complaints. And again, there are some different tactics that can be deployed, increasing product knowledge, improving questioning. So. For something as simple as increased customer advocacy metrics, there are lots of steps and objectives within that um, that really should be measured and analyzed in order to improve performance. Well, we're going to have another look uh, now at uh, KPIs. Uh, so we're going to look at true KPIs rather than operational measures. And what we're going to do is ask which KPIs at the KPI level uh, do you measure? And uh, we've got uh, five things, select all that apply. Uh, so we have first contact uh, resolution. We have net promoter score. We have customer value, customer effort score, and quality scores. So if you'd just like to vote on all of those that are using within uh, your contact center. Certainly I've been hearing a lot of airplay about net promoter score in the, uh, in, in the last few years. Is that going a bit out, out, of, out of fashion, would you say, Richard Snow? Uh, possibly as a, a controversial view. I, I, I see the same trend, and we're going to see some of that in the, in the, in the research that uh, I present um, in just a minute. 
Um, yes, there's been a lot of talk about Net Promoter Score, um, and, a, and a lot of companies do talk about it, but uh, the question now is what kind of action they're taking based on it. Well, let's have a look at the, uh, we'll have a look at the uh, poll results, and it uh, looks like the biggest one of those is quality scores being measured, 71%. Followed by first contact resolution, which is uh, very uh, encouraging to see. Fifty-eight percent of the audience are measuring first contact resolution. Net promoter score, forty-eight percent. So I think that uh, probably is lower than uh, I've seen in uh, in in the, in the past. Uh, customer value, that's a surprise. Only eighteen percent of people measuring customer customer value and customer effort score, fifteen um, percent of companies. So. Um, that's, I guess, is customer effort scores probably the new, is the is comparatively the new kid on the, new kid on the block there. So, uh, uh, quite um, quite an interesting, uh, quite an interesting piece. So um, yeah, some quite interesting results there. Going to um, uh, then pass the baton now across to uh, Richard Snow, and uh, Richard Snow is going to take us through some of the latest research that Ventana research have done on uh, contact center metrics. We, um, is it coming off? We do we need to do a quick change? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Coming through it. There we go. So, it should move. so Richard. Hello everyone. Um, just a, a quick introduction. As, as John T mentioned, I've, I've been in, involved in one shape or form uh, with contact centers and customer relationship management uh, for the last um, 25 plus years and um, several of those working with John T. So, um, and I quickly came to see the importance, uh, particularly in the contact centre, of metrics. Um, and what I want to share with you today is um, how that has moved on and why that's moved on and why um, looking at different metrics and why that matters is becoming increasingly important. And, and the first point I'd make is that a really good reason for moving on is that you and I, consumers, we, we've changed. Um, you know, as, as Johnny again was saying earlier, a lot of people are still using the phone, but I'm sure if you look at your own uh, communication habits and the way that you engage with both your friends, uh, you engage at work, and the way you engage with companies, it's changed dramatically. Um, and we're all gone a lot more electronic, or as some commentators would say we're all becoming the digital customer. So our preference is moving away from the written document, the face-to-face -face meeting, the phone call, into things like um, uh, Facebook, uh, to, into Twitter. Um, and of course a number of us are also turning to, to social me media to um, largely has to be said from what I've seen there um, air our views, but increasingly to engage with customers uh, and look at problem solving um, and getting customer service. So one of the big drivers that we look at is, is that it, consumers have changed and therefore companies such as yourself need to uh, recognize that, recognize the impact and, and adapt um, or indeed you're going to start missing out on opportunities. Um, and one of the things everybody talks about these days is um, different challenges channels of communication. Um, and so in some research I, I completed at the beginning of this year into the contact center in the cloud, um, we actually were asking companies such as yourself, what, which channels do they do you support? And here you can see the results. So um, the traditional channels still do dominate. So phone call, 96, email, 82%, and fax. But what you can see from the research is um, the growing Im impact of, of customers becoming electronic or digital. So chat growing to 37%, the portal, social media, um, text messaging, um, and uh, you know a small number of companies actually now are supporting video calls. Now this is often being now branded as having omni-channel. I mean, I would be a little bit controversial and say our research shows that that indeed is not omni-channel because uh, we, we were asking customers, uh, companies in our research into the agent desktop and customer service what were their number one customer service challenges. And number one uh, was that those channels 
are managed as silos. They're not managed as um, integrated or in an omni-channel mode. They're, they're managed independently. They use different technology. And of course, importantly to this uh, particular webinar, they're producing different data and the different measures coming out of um, those different technologies. So average call handling time really doesn't apply to a chat, um, doesn't apply to social media. So that in itself is, is one very good reason why we believe companies uh, need to start looking at different metrics. But there's even further evidence of, of a need for change. Because along with becoming digital, uh, we've also become more demanding. Again, if, I think if you sit back and think about what your expectations um, uh, of customer service, uh, of calling a contactor is, then you'll probably find yourself thinking very similar to John T, that you know, some do it well, but an awful lot of people uh, don't do it very well. Um, but what you and I want is an answer. We, we have an issue, we have a question, we have a complaint, uh, we want an answer. And we want it there and then. Um, and if you don't get it there and then, then increasingly today what we'll do is we'll probably hop channels and try and get an answer. So that's having a, an impact on customer service and customer service costs. Um, but in order to meet this demands uh, that we as consumers are making on companies, our, again, the research into contact center from the cloud said that more and more companies are getting more and more lines of business, business units involved in engaging with customers. So again, we, we can see from the re results that the contact center is still up there as, as high on the agenda at 87%. And the traditional uh, channels, of, uh, a business unit, sorry, a sales, customer service up there. But, you know, in, fascinating in, in a way, manufacturing, finance and HR also showing considerable numbers of companies having those uh, employees in there engage. And examples I've seen, for example, is if somebody calls in with a billing inquiry, a contact center agent can't answer it, and so today they want to look for uh, somebody in finance to give them uh, some guidance or even give them uh, uh, some advice on how to deal with a customer. And the same maybe with a product uh, inquiry being passed through to manufacturing. So as well as multi-channel, we've now got more business units uh, being involved in customer engagement. Um, and I think as Richard, uh, the other Richard said, each of those has got its different measures. Um, and what we saw from the same research into the desktop and customer service is that the number two challenge companies told us about customer service is that those business units are not aligned. Um, yes, indeed, they have their metrics. You know, marketing has its metrics, sales has its metrics. But there's a common theme behind of all of this, which is the customer. Um, and what we'll see on, the, on, on this slide is that um, the result is that 6% of companies are saying, well, business units have different metrics. They have different objectives. Um, in fact, indeed, they have different information. So um, they're providing different experiences depending on which business unit. Um, and indeed, that's compounded by 9% of customers uh, telling us that uh, you know different employees don't follow best practice. So you probably spend quite a lot of time looking at best practice in the contact center. But as you transfer out some of those calls to other business units, you need ways to uh, transfer those be and best practices as well. Some of the discussions coming through on the chat room, a lot of people from an employee perspective are measuring employee satisfaction. In fact, an interesting debate going on in the, uh, uh, in the chat room about how to measure employee satisfaction. If you're not already logged into the chat room, it's callcenterhelp.com forward slash chat. Indeed, I, I see the same. That there's a lot of uh, talk about um, the correlation between employee satisfaction uh, and customer satisfaction. Quite Something quite simple. Um, and he, although we don't have the, uh, the results in here, that I can tell you from that same research into the desktop and, and customer service, we found a direct correlation. So um, we actually found that very satisfied employees are actually twice as likely, twice as likely to deliver on uh, customer effort, net promoter, customer satisfaction. So a very tight correlation. So measuring uh, employee satisfaction, I agree, is, is, is a big issue. Um, but this also comes into um, the, the next dimension of, of, of re-evaluating, if you like, the, these metrics, changing from what Richard said, operational indicators to K, 
KPIs that reflect the business. And the problem here is, is that you have more and more data. Uh, those systems that you've got measuring all of those channels is generating more and more data. And each of the lines of business is also generating more and more customer data. And the important thing, um, without getting into you know, the whys and what falls of big data, the important thing to remember is this data is in different formats. So you have the traditional transactional data. Yes, we have CRM records. Yes, we have financial records. Um, uh, and these, these are structured uh, and they're managed by typically business applications. But, you know, you're, you're recording calls and those calls have a lot of information, a lot of insights about customers. Um, you're getting lots of these digital messages, the text messages, the SMS, the chat sessions, even web uh, sessions. So a lot of text being generated and I'm certainly not going to go into this today, but increasingly you'll see people talking about collecting event data. And the most obvious one that people are talking about today is location data. So using somebody's mobile phone uh, so you can uh, collect the event where they are um, and be able to provide a service uh, that's, that's directly related to where they are. For example, if you need to go into a bank, you can, you can say, well, you know, take the second on the left and you're at the bank. So we're generating all of this, all of this data. Um, and so what are companies doing with it? Um, well, we asked people in the research into uh, customer relationship management, if you, were they producing a single set of reports um, about their customers that shared across the organization? And we had under half, 45% said they were. But it, actually, if I dive deeper into the results, then even that number is an exaggeration because the majority of those people are still using transactional data. So if you need to move beyond um, where you are today in terms of reports and metrics, um, you need to start thinking about those other forms of data and that's going to lead on to looking at different tools to, uh, to be able to access that data. It would be interesting if anyone in the audience is measuring that from a single, single set of reports, if they'd like to share their, uh, uh, share their, you know, how well they find that works or how they do it on the, on the chat room would be very good as well. I'd be certainly very interested to see that. Um, so, in a day where the world is saying the customer is king, I don't know if you feel you're a king, but um, I certainly don't when I'm trying to engage with many companies, but certainly you and I have more options. Um, and so, uh, we did some research in the, in the middle of this year into uh, customer relationship maturity. So, we were asking companies how they were managing customer relationships. This wasn't about how to, you're using CRM systems, but how you're actually managing um, relationships with com companies. Um, and we, we asked, uh, in, in that part of that research, we, we asked companies what measures they were using from a customer's perspective. Um, here you can see the results with the, the top one being revenue, uh, customer satisfaction being quite high up there, um, and um, some you know, costs uh, are high up there. Uh, and bottom down of the, of the list is customer effort. Um, and to say, John T, jumping in, it, uh, Net Promoter Score didn't feature uh, on the list. It came quite well down. But there's a common characteristic about most of these uh, metrics, which apart from customer effort, they're quite easy uh, to calculate. Um, you know, working out how much revenue you've earned from a customer is quite easy. Um, a lot of people use surveys to do satisfaction score. But the thing, going back to what Richard said in his pyramid, is they don't really uh, reflect outcomes. Um, they don't say, I had this phone call with this customer, and as a result of that phone call, you know, I got a new sale, or retained that customer, or extended the lifetime of that customer. They're really about fairly basic, simple uh, metrics. But what I did in the same research was to split out those companies that said they were very customer focused. So those companies that have taken on board, if you like, the customer is king. Um, and this was, this was the same question, but actually looking at the, what, how differently those that said they were very customer were to those that would, uh, it, it, that would either just customer focused or not customer focused or didn't care. And what we can see from that result is that, um, as John T was alluding to, customer effort has jumped right to the top of the pile. So very customer-focused companies 
have taken on board that their customers want to engage with them and they want to do it in the simplest way through the channel of their choice and they don't want to go round and round circles in IVR. They want it to be easy. So measuring customer effort, which is a measure of that ease of contact, has become the top measure from a customer perspective for those very customer-focused companies. And I think we've got a kind of clear disconnect here between, you know, in our audience only 15% are measuring customer effort score, and yet 76% of customer-focused com companies are doing it. So I think there's a, there's a clear, uh, clear disconnect there, and I think it was probably best put up on a recent webinar we did, Dr. Nicola Millard from BT have said, you know, effectively loyalty is dead. Um, but uh, ease, ease of uh, dealing with customers is the new loyalty, that uh, customers can move any time, but if you make it easy to deal with, they'll stay around. I think there's an awful lot of, of truth in those statements, and um, when I get to the point of revealing the latest research, um, I'll come back and reflect on, on, on that point. But again, uh, uh, what we've seen is another thing which the very customer-focused companies have uh, have spotted, which is that um, indeed uh, social media, uh, as already referenced and you're well aware, has become very popular and as I said it's, large, it's largely used for airing views and, and, and many of those views are negatives uh, and that makes a lot of companies panic about what to do with uh, social media. Um, but the very customer focused companies have kind of tempered that panic by saying well, um, you know, I need to look at how influential that person who's tweeting or, or posting on some other website is um, and therefore I need to temper my uh, response uh, to those tweets and, and uh, those posts um, based on uh, their influence or what rating and so um, that's uh, something again which has uh, come in from nowhere and you see what that's done is, is driven, driven those uh, traditional metrics um, further down down the pile. And uh, what that means is, 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 is a reflection of those companies have, have, have recognised that ease of contact is important. Uh, as John has said, you and I, we, we, can, we can move co uh, companies quite easily. Um, maybe some of the, us older ones are, less are more reluctant to move than, than younger customers, but I certainly know my daughter, and no hesitation, she'll she'll go to the website and she'll buy from the website that's uh, easiest to use and I'm sure your, uh, your, your kids are like that. So recognize that ease of contact is important and, and the impact of, of social media. And what we can see in these is that these are what we call, they're more effectiveness, but they're more outcome metrics. So they're not those efficiency metrics. Your average handling time is really about efficiency. How quickly did I handle calls? When you're looking at customer effort or influencer rating or even satisfaction, it, it's saying what was the outcome of, of those contacts. Um, and to produce those, the key thing is, you, again, you have to look back at what I said, customer data is growing exponentially and you need to look at how to collect that data and different tools to produce those metrics. So here's the great uh, revelation. Uh -huh. in the. Uh, in the very latest uh, piece of research I've done into what we call next generation workforce optimization, we we're actually asking uh, companies such as yourselves what metrics they use to measure agent performance, which is effectively um, contact center performance. And, and the key here is that I coded everything in blue in what we call an efficiency metric, those operational metrics uh, that you used. Um, the, the customer ones were, were coded in red. Um, and I decided to pull out for first contact resolution as a special case. And what you can see from this research is that actually you're not unaligned with most of, of the industry because these operational indicators, these operational metrics still are most important and you can see why I thought average length of a call would still be the number one metric. And anybody that follows me on Twitter knows I've even gone onto Twitter saying the day that it's not the number one metric, then I'm going to retire. So <laughs> if you want to not hear me anymore, then change your metrics and uh, I'll be gone. But you can see that these, the, the customer effectiveness metrics, customer satisfaction level, uh, net promoter score, customer effort score, value of sales made is a, a, a much further down the list than those operational metrics. 
But one thing which has changed quite dramatically in my 10 years of doing research is first contact resolution. It has become, and you can see here, it's, it's only showing as number six, but I can tell you two years ago it was nowhere. Um, it didn't make the list. Um, and so it's been the one that's, I would say, rising fastest. Um, and again, this is back to a partial recognition of the fact that customers want an answer. Um, and believe it or not, I don't think any of you, are, you'll be like me, you don't care who gives you the answer, you just want the answer and you want it the first time. It doesn't matter what channel you use, you want that channel to be easy and you want an answer. So first contact resolution is something which is, is grown in importance and is growing in importance um, and that is reflected um, in this piece of latest research. So we're going to uh, go to another poll now, just get the uh, poll lined up here. Quite interesting, the 12% um, uh, uh, on customer effort score is very similar to the 14% we had in, uh, in our results. So let's just get the, uh, get the poll lined up for everyone to, uh, everyone to vote on. Um, and it is, what barriers are preventing you from using better metrics? Uh, the answers are too difficult, too complicated, too expensive, IT issues, senior management not bought in, or other departments not aligned. I'm guessing by some of the questions on the chat room coming in, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of comments about uh, management buy-in and alignment in particular. So uh, I'd be interested to see how that comes through. So if you'd just like to vote on the poll now. Richard Farrell, any ideas where you think things are going to come up? You've worked in technology for, for quite a number of years. Do you think that's going to be... Uh... Yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting one. I think often there is a perception that it's too difficult to do, but I certainly think technologies have moved on that make it much simpler to integrate and to capture information. Um, the senior management, of course, is always a challenge. So we'll... Uh... Uh, put the results up on the uh, screen now, and indeed, IT issues uh, come up top on there, 57%, so I guess it's quite difficult to capture some of them, uh, followed very almost evenly, senior management not bought in, and other departments not allowed. Uh, Doogie had said uh, early on you know, a comment about the KPI pyramid. Uh, KPI pyramid, uh, you know, if it fails, it's due to leadership, lack of clarity of vision, no buy-in or or short-term targeting, which I think is that short-term targeting, which is sometimes quite useful if you've got a, a sort of little problem, but it tends to hang around for, uh, for a lot too much there. So that's the uh, uh, poll results, so quite, quite fascinating there. Uh, too expensive or too difficult, we're, we're much lower down the, uh, down the scale on that. So. so hopefully the education is, is moving forward there. I think also a lot, a lot of the new technologies um, using web technologies are simpler to get data from and integrate than old-fashioned traditional methods. So if you just put your slides back up on the uh, screen. Yeah, I think, uh, just my observation on that as well, I think if you, if you go back to Richard and the pyramid, I'm probably a bit more pragmatic than the pyramid, but you know, one of the things I would say and what you're reflecting in, in, in those results for the poll is, is, is lack of management buying, but I should say one of the key things for me to do is just you know find out what their measures are and 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 say you know how does how does uh, things you know they worry about share price well how does share price re relate to average call handling time um, how are you going to make that connect um, and that's one of the things I think making those connections uh, but both across the organization so the business units and up and down um, at the organization is important. Um, but I, uh, quite interesting, as Richard was saying, that uh, you know, the, the technology and, uh, and the IT issue is that one of the things, going back to that research into customer relationship maturity, uh, with those companies using more customer focused, more outcome metrics, um, they are taking advantage of those other data sources. Um, so in, in particular, they're taking advantage of, of call recordings. 
Now, in my experience, uh, yes, companies are using uh, call recording, uh, but a lot of the analysis is, is done manually, um, and, the, and the analysis tends to be focused on agent performance. But clearly, if you have a customer on the phone, the customer's talking as well. Um, and so there's lots of insights to learn about customers. And so these companies that are very customer focused uh, have understood that and have moved to technologies such as um, voice analytics um, that, that, that can analyze all calls and can analyze both uh, sides of the, uh, of the conversation and, and produce analysis of that and indeed derive metrics. Um, and again, um, so with the importance of social media uh, and my advice to social media is always start off by understanding what your customers are saying. And so um, a, a rapid in adoption of very customer focused companies have social media analytics so they can understand um, customer data. But importantly, the message is they're looking at tools and ways of using more sources of data to, to making that report and analysis of customers and those metrics uh, more complete um, and, and use that more widely, not just Here's a pretty chart uh, for people to look at, but actually use it. Um, we talked about you know, their outcomes, but you need to take action based on, on what's actually happening. So look at how you can use that analysis to improve training of people across business units, improve processes, um, not just, so, as I say, just to have that pretty chart which everybody can look at once a month and forget about. Okay, thank you very much for that. We're now going to jump to another poll, and that poll is going to be, what do you use to produce your metrics? Uh, so I'll just get the poll lined up here. So the answers are spreadsheets, enterprise business intelligence tool, for instance, Cognos, is a company I've not looked at, probably don't need to have a look at, contact center analytics, a home belt built system, or a consolidated dashboard. So be uh, quite interested to see the uh, results coming up on this. Um, I am looking for examples of spreadsheets for producing reports. So if anyone's got a, a spreadsheet they're willing to share with me, I'm looking to uh, uh, develop some templates that people could uh, use for download on Call Center Helper. If you could send one in, send it to me at jonty.ps at callcenterhelper.com. I'd be very grateful. Uh, won't publish it, but it just for my... Uh, uh, knowledge of the types of things that people are using, so it'd be great to uh, great to see that. Right, so let's share the uh, results and um, ah, perhaps no surprises of what uh, what's come top of the uh, top of the list. Uh, good old Mr. Uh, Excel. Um, well, not necessarily Mr. Excel these days. It could be Mr. Google Google Docs, I guess. Uh, comes up top. Um, consolidated dashboard. Um, Thirty-nine percent, quite uh, quite high. Um, Surprise for me here, 28% home-built home built systems mm. on there, uh, and contact center analytics 32%, and uh, only 21% with an enterprise business intelligence tool. So um, would you expect an ent enterprise business intelligence to be higher there, Richard? Or? Um, I tend to see those as coming in second behind good old Mr. Excel. Um, which is still the most dominant spreadsheet. Um, and that largely comes down to the fact that uh, many companies have got an enterprise BI tool um, and so get IT to, um, to adapt that to produce uh, their contact center or customer analytics. So I'm a bit surprised it's not even higher. Wonderful. Now, Richard Farrell, you're going to take us through some of the, the findings of uh, some of the published work that's out there on uh, measurement? Yes. So. Um, when we were producing this, we found it very interesting to see the di discrepancy between um, Richard's results on agent performance metrics and some recent contact Babel research on what contact centers considered the most important contact center metrics. So um, in agent performance metrics, of course, we had average length of calls at the top. Um, very interestingly, um, in the most important contact center metrics for contact center managers, um, that seems to be um, less important. So even between the contact center manager and the agent, we perhaps have a misalignment between objectives and metrics. 
Um, we have just a slight question on the contact Babel methodology on this one because customer satisfaction rating and net promoter score are, are lumped in together. So we would really question how much of, of, of each element is mm -hmm. within that. But certainly um, contact center managers in this survey were believing that some of these outcome related measures were more important. But as I say, at the agent level, they seem to be more of the operational efficiency type measures. Um, we We've also had some recent user forum events. We've had three events around the country with around 200 attendees. And we asked our attendees to rank metrics that they used. And just like our, our audience today, um, we have some of these real um, operational efficiency indicators are ones which are actually used. We asked the next question, which metrics do you would you aspire to use? And the good news there is that certainly net call users are looking in the right direction in the future towards feedback and quality. So more about the outcome of the interaction rather than the efficiency or just the um, um, productivity of the activity. I think this says a lot about management alignment, doesn't it? This, what we are using and what we'd like to use. Yeah. Um, and it's fine to think we'd like to use that. But if management are always saying, what's the average handling time? Um, what's the percentage answer? Then it's, it's, it's a real challenge, and that's the challenge for our audience today, I think, um, that really they are in between um, the operational indicators and the traditional measures. Um, I think, by definition, our audience today um, will be interested in how to improve performance mm -hmm. and how to, to do the right thing, and part of that is to obtain the senior management buy-in. Hang on, let's measure the right things, let's do it in the right way, let's measure what's important. So just uh, in summary, I, uh, what I'm going to do is ask our two speakers for their uh, concluding thoughts on uh, what should our audience do in terms of uh, takeaways from today's webinar, and then we'll get on to the top tips and see what uh, advice our audience are going to give to each other. So Richard Farrell, what's your, uh, your top takeaways? Okay, so I'll be really cliched and say that the, even the longest journey starts with one step. It's one small step <laughs> every day, um, and on Monday morning, perhaps there's a couple of things to think about. So we'll give you Friday off to complete the rest of the week, but Monday morning <laughs> after, after the weekend and you watch Downton on Sunday night, get into the office on Monday morning and think about a couple of things. Um, the first one is try and break down those silos. How can you support an organization-wide view? Um, if another department, classically marketing, might be doing something in the social space or a delivery department might be doing something, how do you support an organization-wide view? Um, so that's an important thing to do. Um, talk with your peers, um, try and get the metrics that matter. The other key takeaway we think here is um, outcomes, measure the outcome of the activity. Outputs, not inputs, and so we've gone through that quite a lot. And then alignment is a, is a classic one. Make sure that we align customer activities. Saw a really good example recently um, where a company had um, a Facebook page um, ready to take comment and feedback Unfortunately, they didn't have it manned over a bank holiday weekend, so a negative comment was on there for 19 hours without being responded to, um, tens of thousands of, of likes on there. Of course, if it was their contact center, they'd have answered the call in 20 seconds. Yeah. So it's really important to align the activities. Um, just one thing to add in there, um, and we, we put it in our notes as we were going through the rehearsal. We didn't put it on the slide, um, but it, it came, came up in the, the chat room feedback as well. Don't forget the agents. Um, align their metrics as much as possible, align the measurements of agents with what's important, make sure you can translate it up that pyramid. So Richard Snow, what are your key takeaways for uh, our audience to go when they get to work next week or if they're on half term uh, the week <laughs> yeah. after? Um, if I was going to say what to do on Monday, I'd say do number two, which is very uh, aligns very much with what Richard has said, which is uh, get all the business units on the same page. Um, it, it, it is really quite obvious. A customer is a customer, and whether they're talking with marketing, sales, customer service, whether they're on the website, whether they're on the social media, they are a, a, an individual. And so, um, in, in this day, this day and age, I think it's very important that uh, you need to get uh, that alignment across uh, business units. Um, I think again, picking up on what Richard just said, um, if you're supporting the uh, more channels, then there are different metrics uh, used for those. Um, 
Uh, and don't always panic that you need to answer a tweet in five seconds. Um, but uh, you do need to consider um, the metrics uh, for, for the other channels as, as well as voice. Um, and the way I put it in number three is a more balanced set of shared metrics. Um, you're not going to get, uh, you know, we're not going to see average handling time go away. We're not going to see queue lengths go away. So I wouldn't want you to go with a message saying Richard Snow just said get rid of average handling time. That was only to get me to retire. Um, <laughs> what my message is, is you need a more balanced set of metrics. There needs to be this balance between outcomes and, um, and efficiency. Um, and, and I think, again, I, I really go along with the fact you need alignment. Picking up on your point, Jonty, you know, there's agents, there's managers, um, and then there's management. And I think I see a reflection in there. Managers say, customer sat is important to me because their boss has told, it, told them it's important to you. But what they're really managing is average handling time. So you do need to get that alignment both across and up and down and get management buy, buy in. Um, and um, I'm afraid I'm going to have to finish with the last one saying, well, you do need to start looking beyond Excel uh, because uh, you really can't get insights from phone calls and text-based data uh, using Excel. It's uh, just not possible. So start to look at the adoption of some of the newer analytics on the marketplace. Thank you very much indeed for that. So quite a range of uh, food for thought there for uh, people to uh, start to do on uh, on uh, on Monday or when they're back in uh, back in work. Um, so it's best uh, to now go through the top tips from the uh, audience. We're going to have a look through. Uh, if you haven't sent in a tip, if you'd like to leave those on the chat room, callcenterhelper.com forward slash chat. And if you could use hashtag tip at the start so we know if it's a, a tip or a general uh, general discussion. We're going to start with a couple of tips that have come in from uh, Doogie. I think Doogie's trying to win that bottle of uh, champagne. Uh, his first tip is simplicity is best. Everyone in, understands what is going on, how we start from the basics, a, a KPI for happy customers and a KPI for happy Happy employees. I see some uh, nods around the table here. Richard Farrell, that seems to... Yeah, I, th I think there's a lot in the employee satisfaction. I mean, I, I'm aware of some organizations that predominantly measure employee satisfaction because they think the byproduct of that will be customer satisfaction. So I think there's an awful lot in there. Um, yeah, if you can get the people self-motivated, it makes it a lot simpler. Yeah. And Dougie's second tip is uh, very much along that line. An engaged employee will have a better chance of satisfying a customer. Micromanaging operational metrics disempowers and disengages your frontline employees and make them less likely to care. And certainly um, things like average handling time does tend to have that effect. There was someone pointed out to me recently, it's very hard to do an Excel cal calculation if you don't, uh, an Erlang calculation if you don't know the average handling time uh, of there. So right, let's have a, a look at some other ones. Phil says, uh, I used to hold sessions with my team quarterly to ask what we could do to improve what they would put on each question. Then we made the team responsible for making the, the changes that we could do. It shows that we listen, that the people need to take responsibility. So that's a sort of kind of, a, which is now I guess, a, but both a metric and feeding back ownership. Um, well, I think it's a whole new subject. Um, and I, I recently uh, blogged about this, is um, yeah, a lot of your actions, if you're going to become very customer focused, then a lot of your actions need to be driven by customer feedback. And I think the same applies from an employee point of view. Um, I think the key thing uh, that Phil is saying here is that um, don't collect that feedback if you're not going to do anything about it. Um, you know, if you get customer feedback that, you know, you're IVR is not very good. Just leaving it the same way is really not worth asking the question. Yeah. Uh, and Doogie has uh, reproached me saying, knowing AH AHT and managing AHT are very different yeah. things. Customer and frontline don't care about airline calculations. Mm. So uh, very true. Um, okay. Alex has said, tip, one way to measure customer effort is to ask, did you get more out of your call with us today than you expected? Um, uh, a simple yes or no on a post-call survey, a simple, quick and simple way to capture feedback. Interesting, not thought of, uh, not thought of that one before. Um, 
I, Alex, I'm with you. I mean, I've seen, I see too many surveys. I've been asked to fill in too many surveys that are far too long. Um, if you want to, to get feedback and you want to measure some of these things, then I absolutely agree. A simple question um, at the end of the survey, get more responses and give you as a company more insight into what customers feel. So Geraldine said, empower your employees to have the ability to go above and beyond anticipating customer customer needs. Uh, do we, another one, the, the best customer focused organizations have a very clear statement of their customer vision. So it sounds very much like your, your pyramid, um, uh, Richard. Clear objectives that they live by and recruit and operate based on the, those vision and values. Those that aspire to be customer focused but fall short are often distracted by short term bumps in the bumps in the road. Mm. And I guess that's uh, that's one of the uh, one of the challenge. Uh, Phil, don't underestimate the amount of data you'll be able to obtain. Make sure you have the capability to do something effective. And that's I guess one of the problems with so much information is you can sometimes get a bit lost in the lost in the in the detail. Yeah, and I'd also add that the um, when you get into some of the the big data, it's important to have some understanding of statistics um, to make sure that you don't make changes based on normal variation or stuff that's common cause or stuff that's special cause by outside the contact centre's control. Mm. So we, we've there's the classic example of measuring net promoter score as a call centre outcome, um, but then the business um, does a big price hike, mm. um, and all yeah. of a sudden your NPS goes down. What's, what's the contact centre done about it? Yeah. I. I I mean, I think I go back to what you said, Richard, uh, earlier, and 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 our position on on big data. I mean, it, it's not the volume of data that's really important. It's not actually even the speed. There's technology around that can deal with that. Uh, what's important is is understanding what do you want to measure, uh, why do you want to measure that, and then very importantly, what are you going to do when you, you when you see those insights. So. Uh, I think they're the important. So we'll have a quick look at a couple of audience questions. Bianca said, how do you measure customer effort? Richard, to know any pointers? I think we had that uh, a very good example, a, a simple survey yeah. at the end of the call, simple yes, no answer. Yeah. Yes, no, well, I think the, the official one is um, uh, how much effort did you have to take take place to get in something along that line? I like to have I liked our uh, listeners' uh, response better than that. Yeah. And uh, must have explained what customer effort is. Again, I mean, it, it, it's it's a it's a pretty simple concept. It's it's understanding how easy, um, you know, was 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 it to contact us, and how easy was it to get the answer you wanted. So um, going round and round an IVR for ten minutes is not easy. Um, getting a responsive agent is very easy, and that's what you're measuring. What was the level of effort and needs? Yeah, if, if, there's one, if there's one simple way to measure what it's like for your customers, perhaps ring your contact centre at half nine on Monday morning and see what the customer effort is to get through. I think that would be quite fascinating. 